with this video, I'm going to show several modifications that I've made over the last few years to my 20 gallon parts washer. These units are available all over the place. I don't recall where I've got mine, but it's probably six or seven years old now and it's been quite serviceable for me. But I have made some changes to it and that's what this video is intended to depict. The first one I wanted to share was the uh, base, it's a movable base that I made out of plywood that you can see uh, here. I used three quarter inch plywood, I think those are one by twos, to create the lip you see right here. I measured the outside of the base, of course, sized the plywood accordingly. I bought four inexpensive casters and one of the unit on the casters. All four of those casters do swivel, by the way. Two of them are not fixed as would typically be done in something like this, but I wanted complete mobility and uh, it works really well. I don't have any problems with sloshing or fluid moving around uh, excessively, that kind of thing. If you're careful when you move it, uh, it works fine. The reason I put it on the, uh, the movable platform is I wanted to reposition from time to time, clean underneath it and those kind of things. So that's worked out really well for me. The next item I wanted to show was the external fluid filter that I installed on the right rear leg of the unit. Uh, the uh, filter mount itself, which uses a standard spin-on style automotive filter. I'll go through that in more detail in a moment. These units are available at your local auto supply store. You can get them online. I think I bought this one at JEGS. Uh, typically used by hot rodders, uh, dune buggy enthusiasts, or anyone that wishes to mount uh, a secondary or primary external oil filter. In this case is being used for the cleaning fluid filter. Very simple to mount, a couple of bolts through, I drill, drill a couple of bolts through, mounted it to the leg. Um, I also added this valve that you can see here, so that when I need to clean the filter, or change it rather, you just spin this off of course, shut the valve off first, the idea being number one, I don't want to get a siphon effect started here, which would be possible I suppose, it's precautionary. Close the valve, spin off the filter, spin on the new one open the valve and you're back in business. This is the input to the filter here. This is the output that goes back to the discharge pipe in the tank itself. To mount it I drilled a couple of holes. These are the fittings for the uh, uh, output spigot that we'll see on the inside of the tank. I put a grommet here and I'll show that on the inside of the tank in just a moment. Uh, that's worked really well. The filter that this particular unit uses is an off-the-shelf standard 8A. As you can see here, this happens to be Quaker State. PH 8A would be the FRAM number. A few bucks, almost anywhere you can get these. And um, inexpensive, easy to change. And it really works well. Typically, I probably have to replace this filter every, oh, maybe six months or so, depending on how often how much I use the, the tank. Uh, the more it's used, of course, the sooner this filter is going to uh, require changing. It's worked out really well. Next item I want to show was the drain that I modified. This tank came with a pipe plug in this fitting here that was welded in, right there. I pulled that, obviously pulled that out, rigged up a couple of 90s here with some piping I did have to buy this this valve as well and put this little drop pipe on it. So when I want to change the filter or drain the tank for whatever reason, you simply open this valve, put a bucket, of course, underneath here to catch the fluid, and you're in business. Uh, it's a lot easier than messing around with a pipe plug up underneath here. I can't obviously open the valve right now or I would have fluid all over the floor. That's also been a great addition to the tank. Next thing I want to show is this a uh, large chip clip. I just uh, picked up one of these chip clips available for munchy bags almost any grocery store. Uh, I glued to it a heavy magnet with some epoxy and then I can attach it right here to my tank where I can keep my solvent gloves. I got two different kinds of solvent gloves. This green one and the front one is actually a solvent resistant glove. 
The one behind it, the yellow one, is simply a dishwashing style glove that you can buy at any grocery store. But I do uh, use gloves often. I almost never immerse my hand in the fluid, even though it's relatively benign. I don't think it's very healthy to do that on an ongoing basis. And since I use this so much, I want to, uh, don't want a long-term exposure to the fluid. This is the inside of the tank. Fluid level is probably a little bit low right now. I use a high flash point solvent-based fluid that uh, I buy at TSC. I wanted a high flash point fluid simply for safety reasons. My shop is enclosed, it's heated, it's drywall, insulated just like a home. And um, I didn't want to obviously take any chances with safety. The, this is the output from the pump which is mounted in here. So when I made this change, I measured the standpipe, the silver pipe you see here was originally mounted here. I removed it, measured the size of the fitting, went down to my local automotive store, bought the right size uh, tubing here to fit over the fitting. Was, uh, as you can see, pipe clamps. I had drilled a hole, put the bushing, ran the output from the pump through the tank down to the filter that I illustrated a few moments ago. Took the output from the filter up here had to rig up a couple of different fittings to make this work and then reattach the original discharge pipe as you see here. The pump has had no problems uh, pumping through the filter. It's always worked really well. I'll turn it on here and you'll be able to see it work. There will be a noticeable decrease in fluid flow when the filter becomes um, full. It's very obvious, and when that happens, shut it off, go down there, close the valve, change the filter over quickly, and you're back in business. And it's worked, again, very well for my application. Um, I don't use water-based cleaning fluids. I have tried them, not in this tank, but I have tried them over the years in different applications, and I've really never been satisfied with how well they clean, frankly. So I wanted a... Um, high flash point solvent for this tank, plus the fluid, uh, I believe, lubricates the pump a bit. And that pump's the original. It's, again, I think this tank is six, six or seven years old, and the pump still runs just like a champ. Uh, so I prefer uh, solvent fluids versus water-based, but that's me. And given the safety uh, concerns being in an enclosed heated space, uh, that's where the high flash point comes in. I would never ever consider using something like gasoline or even kerosene, which has a much lower flash point than what this fluid does. I'll probably post a separate uh, video or posting on my blog uh, around the, uh, the details of the fluid that I use. So that's the gist of these changes that I've made. Again, there's, I think, I'm going to share four of them the platform base with the four swivel casters, the uh, fluid filter over here on the right rear leg with a spin-on filter, car filter. The uh, modified the drain system to make it easier to to uh, drain. By the way, one might ask why I would ever drain the, f the fluid if in fact I have a filter. Well, though I do in fact uh, scrape down and, and do a rough cleaning of any components that I'm going to clean in the tank, the reality is the crud does get in there and uh, settles out heavier than the fluid and they'll settle to the bottom and create a, um, a layer of filth on the bottom of the tank. Uh, grease, fine metal, shavings, those kind of things. And, or maybe once a year or so I will drain the tank, save the fluid, uh, scrub the bottom of the tank out to get the, uh, the layer uh, cleaned out and then refill it and run back in business. So, that's why I added that, uh, that valve, discharge valve, and it just makes it easier for that whole process. Uh, that's uh, the extent of the work that I've done on the tank. If there's any questions or anyone would like to uh, know any more detail, feel free to drop me a message and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.